Hello, welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube channel video. You're here with your host, GBHL James, and unfortunately for you guys, this is not an episode of Plantil. It is Friday, and of course, we normally get out Plantil, or normally the guys uh, down south do, but it has been GBHL Damien's birthday, and unfortunately, they got incredibly, incredibly drunk. Um, judging by the pictures that have gone around in the, uh, the GBHL host little Facebook group, um, it looks like it was one hell of a night, but unfortunately it does mean that there is no plant here this week. Um, so I'm pretty sure you guys are missing GBHL Tom and Damien, because I think that's three weeks now without the show from them. Uh, but I do hope that last week you did enjoy uh, GBHL Jamie and I having a crack at it. I think if we'd have had a bit more notice this week, then uh, we probably could have given it a good go. Although it might have been tough for GBHL Jamie this, this week. Um, because he is co-hosting the Scaldic Shield, which is a Guild Ball event. Um, so, why am I here now? Well, would there be no content on the Friday? I thought that it would be a fantastic opportunity to almost carry on from what we were discussing in Jamie and mine's attempts at the planet, which was the future of the game. Because it's amazing what the space of a week can do. So if you've been living under a rock, if you've not been on Facebook, on the forums, there's been a ton of activity this week, tons of interesting images and leaks, and then some official stuff as well. So last week, Jamie and I discussed what is the future of Hobbit SBG and uh, where do we think the game is likely to go. And I, and we were pretty certain, actually. So we were convinced, of course, that, that Games Workshop would not be doing any more releases uh, based on their behaviour and the trend over the last, uh, the last few months in particular, um, and with speculation surrounding uh, the licences and when they look like that they're running out. Uh, and GBHL Jamie had done a little bit of research on that. And as such, the discussion very much was about, okay, so what's going to happen with the game moving forward? Is there going to be a central body for creating rules, uh, for creating new profiles perhaps? And are any companies going to start producing models that would be accepted as being allowed in the game? Then sometime in the middle of this week, a very poorly put together, <laughs> it has to say, um, flyer. Uh, started being posted around and shared around on Facebook, which was sourced back to uh, a games workshop in Australia somewhere. Um, and this relatively poor flyer, I'm not, I'm not getting at that games workshop manager, seems to suggest that there was uh, something that any specialist games fan, so this is people who've played the likes of uh, Mordheim, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, um, Battlefleet Gothic uh, and the like, that these people had a lot to look forward to over the Christmas period because there was going to be a very exciting announcement that Games Workshop was going to be opening a specialist studio with, just for the specialist games. So a specialist game studio that was completely dedicated to, to those games and that would also include Lord of the Rings and Hobbit. Now it's always fascinating when these rumours come up because you get you, you, <laughs> you get two extremes. You, you very rarely get someone in the middle. You get a lot of people going on and going, oh my god, this is absolutely amazing. This is the best news ever for the game. I'm so happy. Look, Games Workshop haven't abandoned us. Games Workshop is the best company that has ever existed. They really care about us. They look after us. And then you get the opposite side of the coin, which is the people going, this is clearly a fake. This is trolling. Um, you know, look, there are spelling mistakes in this flyer. They haven't used the, uh, the, the copyrighted terms for the, for the actual uh, game systems. Um, you know, this is spelled wrong. This isn't how Games Workshop would release this, this and this. Uh, there's absolutely no way that this, this, that this can be true. I'll believe it when I'll see it. Games Workshop are a terrible company. They hate the customers. Um, now I have to say when when I first saw that I was actually going to do a video originally for um, for Hotgates Gaming um, because I had to do a little bit of a news update but unfortunately the battle report which I'm uploading for tomorrow Saturday is absolutely huge so I couldn't upload anything else um, and I was actually going to do a little bit of a video um, explaining and sort of giving my thoughts around that original post so there was much speculation and I have to say. Um, even at the point of the speak friend in question that you're going to get this this um, this Sunday, so this will have been tomorrow, uh, sorry, yesterday, on Thursday, when Jamie and I met for this, we were very much like, do you know what, it actually sounds like it could be something, even based on, um, 
you know, the language of, of people that we know in Games Workshop relatively recently, this could be something which happens. And um, by that we meant that it didn't seem unfeasible that as a business model, Games Workshop would continue to maybe produce, uh, using the IPs that they have, standalone box set games using those IPs um, to sell and use them as a way of getting new customers to eventually buy things like 40k and, and build armies through that um, and doing standalone games. We thought, well actually that's, that's not a million miles off. Is it going to be true? Let's wait and see. So you'll probably see us pondering that a little bit in uh, Sunday Speak Friend of Question. But then today in particular, last night and then today in particular, we have had some some very, very, very exciting news. So some people were saying, yep, I've spoken to my Games Workshop manager uh, and he's confirmed this. And other people around the world are saying, well, my Games Workshop manager hasn't heard this. And then when you get friends such as Steve, people that you know, and you know the people that they know, start saying this is something which has come down through head office, then you get a bit excited. And then you get a bit excited. Now all that could be a, a way of generating interest of, of course, but Games Workshop haven't got a great history of being a huge fan of leaking information as a form of marketing. <laughs> Hell knows why not. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make it, any, any other product um, would want sort of images of things like grainy to, to be leaked um, as, a, as a marketing thing, but Games Workshop aren't particularly famous uh, for this at all. Um, but then, having heard that from the horse's mouth, almost as it were, then you start to think, hang on a minute, this, this sounds like it could be genuine. And then earlier today, I believe it was earlier today, the Games Workshop app made the announcement. It made the announcement. So for anybody who wasn't aware, Games Workshop have confirmed that they are going to be opening a specialist games department, which is purely focused on developing specialist games, boxed games that delve back into those old IPs and continue um, Middle Earth and Hobbit SPG potentially. Which is absolutely phenomenal news. I cannot, I cannot express how exciting that is. Especially when we as a community had got to a point where we were kind of like, look, Games Workshop are going to abandon this game. And who can blame us? You know, as, when, I mean, when I got involved in this channel, uh, Jamie and I sat down and even though there was a lot of negativity out there about the level of support for the game, even at that point for The Hobbit um, and certain decisions and pricing and stuff from Games Workshop, I mean people were effectively condemning Hobbit SBG to death just by not buying it and by saying it was too expensive and, and then complaining when, <laughs> when, it, when nothing else was released. Um, but you know, in the last year it, is, it has been pretty clear that that things were going to get wrapped up. And then to have this news was just absolutely outstanding, like completely outstanding. Um, I'm, I'm blown away. I, I'm, I could not be more surprised, I have to say. Um, and then even more exciting, something which I saw just a couple of hours ago, is that Games Workshop is advertising for jobs for a Middle Earth product designer, a product manager, and also a writer. I mean, that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. There will be someone who is dedicated to, you know, there, there's going to be someone who's dedicated to continuing this game. I mean, I mean, how incredible would it be if the people who got that job were members of this community? Um, not for leaks and all that kind of stuff, but to have someone who's just so, so passionate about Hobbit SBG and the system and, and you know, the, the whole thing generally would be incredible. But even without that, um, just absolutely amazing gobsmacking news and completely gobsmacking so all of a sudden everything that GBHL Jamie and I were discussing last week is is wrong is absolutely wrong and it could it, it would would have made a fantastic Palantir today if the Palantir could have been filmed today based on that information because what a discussion what, what a topic of discussion this is all I, I would be incredibly surprised if this isn't an auto discussion for the plant here next week so i don't want to go into too much detail because of course those guys uh, will cover that in the discussion you guys can all get involved in that but i do want to hear what what people think and what people's thoughts are uh, what do you think is going to happen now i don't think that there's going to be any kind of set uh, you know we're not going to get something all of a sudden but i would be i would be surprised i mean 
look at the 30k box set that's come out. It's a standalone game, which is clearly there to one, uh, existing gamers are going to buy it because it's very, very, very good value for the models because they're different models as well. Um, but it's a standalone box game so people can, who aren't involved in Games Workshop can buy it as a board game effectively um, and play it as a standalone game and that's a way of in encouraging people to play. I would be very surprised if we didn't get a Battle of Five Army standalone game. And maybe that's one of the reasons why Iron Hills Dwarves have been held back by some of these models, which, you know, we've heard. We've I, I saw that somebody had managed to speak to the Perry Twins over at Crisis, which G. Mitchell Jamie had, had gone to, and somebody had spoken to them, and they said that they had sculpted Dane. You know, that they had sculpted Dane, that they had sculpted Iron Hills Dwarves. Um, but it also sounds like Games Workshop are looking for people to create more things. So who knows what's going to happen? I, I just, I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Now, as a result of that, um, like I, I personally think there's going to be like some standalone games that will be, that you'll then be able, that will then have rules, like a, will come with a card, for example, that then you can use for the actual Hobbit SPG system or game. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to carry on being released the same kind of way. I think we're going to get box sets, which are standalone board games, effectively, um, which you can then use for Hobbit strategy battle gaming, should somebody want to do it. But, I mean, what, what, what does this mean for going forward? You know, like what, what are we going to see? Are, are Games Workshop have they are they going to extend the license? Um, I'm just, I'm just absolutely over the moon. I'm sure you can tell that I'm absolutely over the moon. So I want to hear from you guys. I mean, what do you think is going to happen next? Like, honestly, what do you think is going to happen next? What do you think we're going to see? Do you think that it will be old, existing things that have already been sculpted? But with them taking on product designers, that means that they want to sculpt new things going forwards. Um, does that mean that Throne of Skulls is going to be back? You know, are they going to run events again? Are they going to be... Are, mm -hmm. You know, is there the chance that maybe the somebody who works there has seen the independent scene and seen what you know how many people, for example, came to Re Desolation of Stockport and have been going to the other tournaments and the plans for Aldercon and gone? Wow, well look, you know, if uh, if the independent scene can can get what looks like it's going to be over a hundred people, hundred to two hundred people, then you know, surely we should be doing that as well. I mean, what what's going to happen? Um, I was having this discussion with Sam Page, who's up for. Uh, the Scaldic Shield, Sam Page of Mid Sussex Wargamers. We were having this chat, me, him, and George Perkins, um, and we were discussing what what we think that this means for the game going on. But I want to hear from that you guys, as subscribers, um, maybe a little bit of a way to spend your Friday evening is to get into the comment section below and discuss and speculate away and be hopeful. But I need a promise from all of you guys out there, from all of you out there. When I came up with the tagline, support your Hobbit hobby, we needed it. And one thing that we saw was that with the likes of the One Ring, sorry, the England game's on, with the likes of the One Ring, the, out of every 10 people, there was only one or two people that were like, oh, I'm going to support the game. There were a lot of other people who were like, oh, Games Workshop outpriced me. With the price of the Hobbit SBG, I'll never buy another Games Workshop product again. And then those are the same people that complain when the game then ends up not being supported. If Games Workshop bring out a product for us, whatever this next product is, I don't care who you are, we've all got to get it. We've all got to get it and show that this community is strong and we want support and there is a thirst for it. And do you know what? Who cares how much it is? Save up, buy it, beg, borrow, steal, ask for it for Christmas. Whatever it is, get behind whatever they are about to do and really support your Hobbit hobby because that is the only, only way. You know, we cannot afford for less than a thousand people to be buying this, this product as happened with the Desolation of Smaug source books, you know, which is what I've heard. That for it to sell less than a thousand worldwide is not good enough. You need to buy these products. We need to buy these products. Um, so guys, make sure you do support your Hobbit hobby. Um, we've got a new sign off now, of course, um, because there are lots of different ways of supporting your uh, GBHL hosts. Um, you can support GBHL Jamie personally um, on his 
podcast on his Patreon, of course, and of course you've got Hot Gates Gaming now. Uh, so if you want extra battle reports over the course of a week, then you can support me over on that channel. And of course you can support Tom and Damien by getting involved with SBG Magazine. All of the links for that are going to be in the video description below. So make sure you support us and you support your Hobbit hobby. And guys, happy strategy battle gaming with the happiest news that we've had for absolutely months from Games Workshop.